What is up, Stockton? I'm your girl, Carolita, and I am sitting here with Kim Wormsley, Vice Mayor of Stockton, California, and City Council District Member 6. Yes. I kind of said that backwards, right? City Aww. Council Member District 6. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> how are you today? I'm good. How about you? I'm good. Um, you are running again for City Council District 6. How is that going so far? Oh, it's going really, really good. We're excited. I'm excited to be back on the ballot. Um, <coughs> I'm also excited to, sh you know, showcase the community all the great work that I've been doing for the last three years. It's been a long journey um, right. since COVID and, mm -hmm. you know, the serial killer uh, situation and natural disasters, but still stocked and rise. I forgot about all that. I forgot about the floods and oh, the serial killer. Yes. That's that's been that happened all in all those three years. Mm -hmm. That Every, was a crazy yeah. three years. It's been COVID a, too. COVID too. That's crazy. Um, and I just want to get to know a little <clears throat> bit about you. So, you grew up in the South Side, right? Yes. And on you said on B Street. Grew up on B Street in South Stockton, mm -hmm. um, but not not. All my life. So initially I grew up in um, off of the Ben Hall area. So I would describe like my earlier years. I had a lot of exposure to like privilege and a great education. But unfortunately, like my parents divorced mm -hmm. and then we moved into South Stockton. And I soon understood what disadvantaged communities met Um I also soon understood the the um, the tale of two cities, like your your zip code determines a lot in the city. Right. Um, so I've had a, a very interesting upbringing in South Stockton. You got to experience both worlds. I got to experience both worlds: North Side and South Side. Lincoln Unified School District, Stockton mm -hmm. Unified School District. Like when I walked out of the Lincoln Unified School District and I walked into Stockton Unified School District, what they were learning in the Stockton Unified School Districts. I had learned that a long time ago. Like, I understood that um, that the opportunities I had really put me in a place of advantage. But I'm not saying that to boast. I'm saying that because why should it matter where you live? Why does that determine your quality of life, your quality of education, your quality of experience in the city mm -hmm. um, and that helps it really helped kind of build who I who I am as a woman um, you know especially a woman in leadership and you said the past three years you have been a city district six yes council member um, what have what have you created in those past three years what oh. So, I mean, there's been so much. First and foremost, I had an opportunity to kind of weigh in on uh, the nearly $80 million that the city of Stockton received from the federal government through the CARES and the ARP money. So what we did was we really Id identified things that the city needed to do that historically we couldn't do. Um, we did a lot of things to close the gap in the digital divide um, and using the census track, track um, to identify the areas in the city that was most impoverished and poured into those communities. So what are those communities? So pretty much South Stockton. And it's, for me, I want to be mm -hmm. clear because there's so much, uh, to say when people say South Stockton, South Stockton to me is anywhere from Harding Way all the way back. And it's okay. not just District 6. There's other districts. Like District 4. District 4 is encompassed in that. Mm -hmm. District 5 is encompassed in that. But the majority of the poverty in this city really is essentially in District 5 and um, 6. And so we were able to um, to kind of close the gap with the digital divide. We gave out uh, thousands of laptops and um, what are I don't want to say iPads. What are they like? Uh, tablets. Tablets mm -hmm. to disadvantaged communities. Uh, we created um, park equity, um, restoring twenty parks um, in the city. We've done things like um, provided $41 million into uh, rental assistance. So individuals who did not have the ability to pay their rent, 
the city contracted with El Concilio to provide rental assistance. Um, was this during the pandemic? This was during the pandemic, but that was that was huge because that was actually a crutch between whether those individuals were going to be displaced mm-hmm. or not. So that was really kind of curving the gap um, in uh, housing security for individuals. And of course, because there is food insecurity throughout the city. We also contracted with, like, um, um, the emergency food bank, uh, edible schoolyard to provide fresh fruits and vegetables for those communities. Um, So much to say about things that I've done and been a part of. Um, The MLK Corridor, that's a project I talk about a lot. And what does that do? So the MLK Corridor is an underpass that Mm -hmm. was built in 1932. And since then, since 1932, there hasn't been any investment in that corridor and that underpass. So I was able to get the city to invest $350,000 in that that underpass to bring light. Like, I know that that's... Where is their underpass? Is this, it's like an actual underpass? It is an actual underpass. So, for years, it was blightful, it was dark, it was gloomy, there was no light. Mm -hmm. Um, I was able to get the city to invest in that underpass while awaiting uh, potential federal funding to completely elevate that underpass, um, which is huge because, again, we're talking about, like, 1932. Right. Um, Is this the... Underpass right next to 7-Eleven and Rancho yes. San Miguel? Okay. Yes. Yes. So if you go through it in the nighttime, you will notice a significant difference. Right. I usually um, call that Charter Way. Yeah. But I've been here it's for Im- years. Uh, yeah. It <laughs> essentially, it's Charter Way. But, you know, about maybe about 10 years ago, they changed it to MLK. So mm-hmm. people, some people still call it Charter Way, but... Theoretically, is MLK underpass. Right. Um, so I'm sorry that I confused you. Um, I mean, we've done a lot. We've done a park equity uh, survey where mm-hmm. myself and the community members went and, and examined every single park in South Stockton um, to look for, again, equity. Um, we've also been able to do some small changes in parks, but, you know, there's also budgetary constraints, which right. we can kind of get to later. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have invested nearly $15 million in the um, McKinley Park redesign. Mm-hmm. So if you go to our Ask Stockton um, website, you will, our app, um, there's a full chronological time frame of when that park is going to be revitalized. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm hoping that it will begin in the spring of 2024. Um, but again, with like life, right? <laughs> natural disasters, s- you know, series of killings, endemic and pandemic, a lot of those projects have been held up. Um, but as we're coming out of like all of the, the trauma and the drama of the city, um, you know, we're moving forward into like revitalizing that, um, well, that area. What are the plans for McKinley Park? Oh, it's going to be beautiful. So we're revitalizing the pool. There's going to mm-hmm. be a soccer field. There's going to be pickleball. Um, and then through the transformative climate uh, grant, mm-hmm. which we're in, I think, our fourth series of, of um, funding, from the state, um, we're also going to be totally revitalizing to make it very green um, in order to kind of like combat the climate issues and the air quality in South Stockton because so that is trees. problematic. Yeah. More trees, more mm-hmm. green spaces. Um, so it's going to be beautiful. And what are the little changes that you have done to the park? so far um so far the park is it it continues to be on a schedule for you know revitalization and park cleanups Uh, but currently we're just awaiting um the contractor because it did go out to bid to begin uh to break ground and get that pool revitalized and open oh i mean the other parks oh and other parks yeah whatever what are Um, the little things that you have small things like um and it's interesting because um, the Van Buskert area used mm-hmm. to be my area, but then we had to, uh, we did a re a rezoning. So that area is no longer mine, but again, um, Van Busker had a lot of revitalizations with more trees. We've done a lot of <laughs> tree planting. Mm-hmm. If you don't know how to plant a, a tree, it is a very unique process. But that was a part that was identified for that. Um, and then also... You don't just put a tree in the ground? No. 
<laughs> you gotta dig that baby. You gotta dig it. <laughs> like you, you're probably digging like seven and nine feet in the ground, uh-huh. like banging a pole. Uh, it's it's very <laughs> strenuous. Really? Oh yes, and then you gotta have the roots uh, pointed downwards because if they're out flat, then you that's when you see it come up and, and start derooting. And that's why during the floods, a lot of those oh. trees were uprooted because okay. they were not planted properly. Okay. Another conversation, though. Mm-hmm. Um, if you, you know, kind of research the web, you'll also see that um, I really led the charge on the Van Busker redesign. Mm-hmm. So currently we have, and it is a $90 million price tag for the um, the Van Busker golf course. Mm-hmm. However, we're going um, going for federal funding and grant to uh, and grants to seed it. But interestingly, I'm also on the flood control um, agency. So that consists of, um, you know, different cities within San Joaquin County. Uh, last year, myself and one of my colleagues went to D.C., and we were able to get $4 million back um, from the federal government in order um, to reinvest in flood improvement. And that is the Van Busker Corridor as well. So that's going to that's going to benefit Van Busker in so many ways, because now uh, that we got a, a nearly four million dollar subsidy back from the grant, it's now on um, the U.S. Corps of, um, Army Engineer Corps uh, radar. So when other federal grants come up, Van Busker will be a priority area as well for flooding, for for flood control, and mm-hmm. also. Hopefully that hopefully they can put the Van Busker redesign in their work uh, in their work plan, mm-hmm. and if it's in um, the Army Corps of Engineers work plan, most likely we can get direct appropriations from the federal government. So that means like a president has the authority to say, okay, this park in Stockton is on flood watch, is on a levy. Mm-hmm. Um, there's concerns that this levy will break. Let's do what we can, Army Corps of Engineers, to preserve that park and to ser- preserve those uh, waterways and levees so there, so that there isn't a flood. Mm-hmm. So those are just some examples of what we've done. And I, I mentioned this earlier. We also made sure that the um, the baseball fields were kept up to par. And again, you know, the city has not been um, consistent with funding its parks, but through the park um, equity initiative and the things that I've been doing to raise awareness, um, I think that we're in, you know, a few steps in the right direction. Mm -hmm. It's really, really hard to try to, you know, shift and uplift these historical disadvantages that have been here for, like, I don't even want to say a decade. I I mean, these... these situations have persisted in this community for a very long time. And so it's been a long journey into like putting in the attention and the investment that is required to really close that gap between right. 95206 and 95207. Mm-hmm. And the Army Corps, do they also, so they do they work on the levy? They do work on their levies. They are mm-hmm. responsible for the levies. They are responsible if a flood happens. The Army Corps of Engineers are going to be the ones that are pretty much like if a flood happens. Hopefully it never does. But they would be like the point of contact to like, you know, make sure that community and consistent and um, constituents are safe. So they have a responsibility to make sure that our levies are up to speed and up to standard. So they do check the Delta before a flood happens or they just come after? No, they come, they, before. they want to prevent, they okay. want to prevent as much as possible. So the Army Corps of Engineers uh, basically are working with like the reclamation districts um, and then the flood control agency that I currently sit on mm-hmm. because Stockton isn't just one levy. Like if the levy in Brookside is the Smith Canal, right. the Van Musker levy, like there's several levies in our, in, it's a lot. We run on we're the Delta. Delta. Right. Yes, we're the <laughs> Delta. So, um, yeah, the Army Corps of Engineers, they have a, a critical role mm-hmm. in protecting and preserving our levies. Um, 
And again, back because it, it, that was huge about the four million dollar uh, reimbursement. The reason why it's huge is because San Joaquin County, in particular Stockton, because I serve Stockton, we were looking for that reimbursement in 1994. Oh wow! So to receive it, um, what in, are they re- reimbursing? Because in 1994, oh, that's when the flood happened, and yeah, and in we met, yes, yeah, that's right before we moved to West Oh, uh, yes, yeah. and mm-hmm. then citizens got really like, I mean, come on, you you remember 1994? Like, there all the U-Haul trucks were in Western Ranch, right? Because like we were moving people, in. people, and people mm-hmm. were scared, so they taxed themselves. To protect the floods, mm. instead of the Army Corps of Engineers coming out and making, um, you know, that particular levy a, um, a priority, they didn't. It's all about political will too. When you have people yeah. who are like passionate and you know fierce and bold um, and intentional about conversations um, to make things happen, so the community taxed itself in 1994. This four million dollar reimbursement is going back to the um, to the regional flood control agency that I sit on, and essentially it's going to help with you know homeowners having lower costs for flood control insur- or flood insurance, mm-hmm. and it also helps with the build out. So we've been talking. Now that I know you live in Western Ranch, so you already know the tea. <laughs> but, you know, the Western Ranch has a lot of space and a lot of opportunity. Mm-hmm. Well, when when applicants, stores, you know, grocery stores or retail or whatever, when, they're, when they come out to build, you have to do an environmental impact. And one of the things that they look at with their environmental impact um, is, are we in a flood zone? Oh, is that why Walmart's not there? Well, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, because I remember <laughs> going them going door to door and getting the yeah. signature signed. Yeah, but the flood. Build Walmart. Yeah, but I think with back then, I think that you know there were people who were just outright against the project. Mm-hmm. Um, but now we have the consequence, like like you know, fifteen years later. Right. But if you don't have proper flood prevention and flood mm-hmm. control, rather it's Walmart or Target, you can't build. Right. You can't build. So with, you know, continued flood control prevention, intervention, Mm -hmm. resources, and investment, it makes it more easier for the next Walmart, the next Target, the next Rite Aid, or whoever to come in and build because, you know, that flood control is happening in real time in that area. So I think that I know that that was a lot of heavy lifting, Mm -hmm. But it's important for people to understand um, and know. And flood control and flood prevention is also critical in um, in building and developing housing as well. Right. And we know that San Joaquin County, in particular Stockton, because Stockton is the biggest part of mm-hmm. the county, we know that housing is a is a issue not only for our unsheltered communities, but also for our families who are working every day and unable to purchase and or buy a house. That's a problem. Right. It's I a huge like problem. A lot of Bay Area people are coming out of here and taking us out the market. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And then you got to think about it, too, um, as it relates to cost of living and where to find jobs that you don't have to work two, three jobs, you know, that typically you're going to be out of Stockton in order for that to happen. Yeah. And Every, that's a problem. Everybody I know commutes. I don't know, not one person. I commute to the Bay Area. <clears throat> my parents used to commute to the Bay Area. My dad's retired, but my mom has to still commute to Sacramento. Yeah. My sisters it, commute to Sacramento. Right. Everybody commutes out of Stockton. Right. My my da- my oldest daughter commutes yeah. uh, to the Bay Area to work as mm-hmm. well. And that's a problem. Yeah. That's a real problem. Is there anything to grow the jobs in District 6? Because I feel like District 6 is the biggest problem of where you can't find a job near your home. I think that, so as it relates to, like, building jobs, I have a, a whole hypothesis about that. hmm I think first we have to build our schools. Mm -hmm. I think that um, especially like, again, I went to a different school district (laughs) initially. Mm -hmm. The schools, and you learn a lot more. I look at um, the literacy rate in Mm SUSD and I get, I just get goosebumps because it's so, it's not proficient. Right. And it's concerning. Because Manteca Unified is 
West yeah. Ranch. So Manteca Unified School District is a lot better, mm-hmm. but the bulk of um, of South Stockton is, is Stockton. SUSD. Yeah. SUSD is the biggest school district. Um, did, and the, did what was going on in SUSD last year affect how the students are learning and all that? I think that the whole, everything that has happened in the last three years has impacted our kids. So one day we're told, everybody go in your homes, lock your doors. Mm -hmm. This this is going to go on for like maybe six weeks, three months. Next thing you know, we're in, (laughs) we're we're sheltering in place for like two years. Right. And a lot of people that live in Southside are essential workers. Right. Yeah. Right. And then a lot like. So they couldn't help their kids absolutely not and then and then let's talk about the digital divide and how Mm -hmm. that contributed to um our kids ability to thrive like they weren't thriving yeah so i'm from western ranch the kids get computers do the kids at susd not get computers Uh, they did get computers but at the same time too, think about it if your family is impoverished Mm -hmm. um how does that help your ability to like remain grounded focus afford internet like mm-hmm. there's so much to say about how the pandemic impacted our kids ability to thrive and have a, an educational infrastructure like for my son my youngest son who was eight during that time I think he was like six mm-hmm. he was on an iPad going to kindergarten yeah you know what my, he, you know what he was doing <laughs> he was flipping and having you know, Cheerios. Or, mm-hmm. I mean, there, he was not attentive to what was happening. And think about the amount of parents who are working. Yeah, my daughter's the same age. And yeah. I was a post office worker, so I would have to drop them off at daycare. And hopefully they got some work done. Oh, but but yeah. <laughs> oh no. When my son was going to daycare, everybody in a daycare was in a Zoom with him in kindergarten. Like, there's so many dynamics. Mm-hmm. But, you know... Getting back to your point about building this economic workforce, it's difficult to build a workforce when we don't have the educational infrastructure to really build a workforce. And I think that that's a problem. So, you know, with someone, when you're in a leadership position and our role, it's important to call that out. So Mm -hmm. I, I stay calling out, like, the educational divide. I stay calling out, um... And not only just to call it out, but also to find solutions for how do we close the gap. Mental health is significant right now. Right. Um, I'm also a licensed clinical social worker, and I can tell you that there are not enough providers for the need that's out there. And in with our youth, the Center for Disease Control just unveiled like nearly 70% of our young people are experiencing a mental health concern on any given day of the night or any given day of the year. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. So I say that to say this, we need to invest in building up our community and our young people, providing them with the skills and the, um, and the resources to thrive. Because if we're not doing that, we're not properly creating a workforce. Right. Um, how can you build a workforce if people are unhealthy? And that starts at like so many aspects of the educational realm that we have to have these conversations. Um, I had someone talk to me about like, what it is to employ people from Stockton, even in a job like Tesla. Like, that requires you being able to read. It requires you to be able to write and understand formulations. Well, if these kids are graduating and they don't even have the the essential tools to thrive, what is that doing to our workforce? Yeah, I think it has a lot to do with community because – as a working mom or a working parent, you are you can't be there all the time for Absolutely. your children. So we have to rely on the community and what they give us. So if you're saying that they're not getting to level to be in the workforce, how do we change that? So that goes back to the comprehensive conversations that we have to have collectively as leaders mm-hmm. um, and people in authority to make that change. Like, what are, how can we, as a city, a county, and a school district, how, do, how can we come together 
to build an infrastructure that can support the community. You know, like you you mentioned, um, working and being focused on like paying bills. Sometimes it's it's not hard to always. It's hard to be attentive to everything as a parent mm-hmm. when you're constantly trying to balance your life which is your child's life as well. And so one of the things that I've been proud of is like the city has done some great things with expanding community services um, and making sure that our staff are trauma informed because it's tough. So we need to recognize that, that sometimes people are just not going to (laughs) be cheerful and, you know, uh, engaged because trauma is real. Um, We need to, also be talking about, I mean, some people may may um, disagree, but when you have children, you don't get a book and say, hey, chapter one to three, this right. is what's going to happen. Like, sometimes you go through the motions. And if my older kids are listening, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I, I'm probably a, a, the best parent with my younger kids because I've learned through the, the oops yeah. with my older kids. So I say that to say this, again, like investing in people and giving them resources um, is critical. Um, for me, even like when I go onto social media or if I'm engaged, I always talk about like make sure you're if you have a problem or an issue um, and you need some resources, make sure you call 211. That's a great uh, community-based resource line that you can call at any given time. 211, and just, again, you know, building our communities um, and our residents and our young people. The city of Stockton, our budget is $90, um, $90 million a year. For the care system? No. no, for the entire budget. That's it? That That's seems it. low. I know. But I think that it's also... Um, it's also... I think folks don't really kind of understand uh, budgetary processes, but the majority of our budget goes to public safety. Right, and public safety. Public, it's about 70% of our budget. Is that police force? Police force and also um, fire. Fire, but we're low on police force, so. We're low on police force, but it's, it's still... It's still populated in our um, our budget because we, even though we're low, we still have to formulate those FDEs, those full time positions. We still mm-hmm. factor them in, um, and then like maybe ten percent is for water, and then the rest is for everything else. Everything else from community services, everything else for infrastructure, and then we have probably about a billion dollar deficit in our infrastructure. But that's why ca- the cares and the art was really beneficial mm-hmm. because the cares, the care and the art money help kind of close the gap on infrastructure. But I will go back to the natural disasters because I think that that also complicated um, our critical infrastructures, our roadways, our sidewalks. I think the trees toppling. <laughs> the what? The whole, what is it called? Potholes. The got potholes. Worse. Oh. I'm like, did the, the did it shit? Because it, it's everywhere now. Usually it used to be a certain street, and I'll just be like, okay. But it's like, I don't want to put down another street, but I mean, another city, but it's like going to Oakland. <laughs> and the reality, but you know, the reality is uh, I've been like, uh, going, to, I went to a conference and it was about infrastructure. Mm-hmm. Other cities are taxing their residents like a one cent tax, just solely for infrastructure. Again, when the majority of your budget is for law enforcement and public mm-hmm. safety, it's kind of hard to squeeze it out. That's why ARP and CARES were great. Um, but during the and you know you learn a lot. But during this is what was explained to me by Public Works. During the natural disaster, like, because the roads were so significantly saturated with all that water, Mm -hmm. all it did was kind of break down, you know, the concrete. Because the concrete is just, you know, the cement and the water. It's nothing really substantial. Right. Um, And so, yeah, there are streets that are just, like, really tore up. And, And I think people need to understand, too, that the the system that gets the majority of your tax dollars, which is the San Joaquin County, they don't invest in infrastructure. 
No. Their priorities are the mental health services, public health, uh, emergency services, um, and the hospital. But there, that's where the bulk of your dollars go. They, they do some infrastructure projects, but not as much as the city. And the city of Stockton is the biggest city in the entire county. Why do you think our tax money is so low? Is that because we don't our income is low in the city? I think that so I wish I had this um this in person. So you got a dollar. Mm-hmm. Well, 75 cent of your dollar is going to the county. Mm-hmm. Then you have and maybe it's a little more. Um the city gets maybe 13 cent. But mm-hmm. hold on cuz SUSD wants their 7 cent. And then what's left is what the city gets. Oh, wow. So when we talk about taxes, that's the general dollar. Now, there's other taxes, like there's a Measure W tax, there's a Measure A tax, and those are separate taxes. But the majority of your tax, your dollar, does not go to the city of Stockton. It goes to the Board of Supervisors. And I think as we talk, continue to, like, talk about, um, you know, the – the political processes, I think it's important for people to understand that. I don't think a lot of people understand uh, where their property taxes go to. If you open up your property um, tax bills, you'll probably see other things like the Melarus tax, the Measure A tax. Um, if you have like a maintenance tax um, in your community and our district, we don't really have those in South Stockton, but some housing developments like in Trinity Park, they have like the, the maintenance um, taxes. Like we have some in Western Ranch because like when you go down William Moss, is that William Moss? No. What is the street? Is that Carolyn Western? I lived there for almost thirty years. Yeah. Don't ask me. I don't I, know how to the, get home. The street. <laughs> do you ever see the guys with the with the lawnmowers and their maintenance scene? Like yes. the main. So yes. those are property. Those are community. Yeah, Carolyn mm-hmm. Western. Those are like the community taxes that are paying for that service. Mm-hmm. In other areas in Stockton, they may have a few more than we do. But remember, they keep it nice though. They they I keep do in give mind. Them that. Yeah, they do. It's mm-hmm. very nice. Like, but. Keep in mind that South Stockton doesn't have a lot of those taxes because we're the oldest part of the city. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. South Stockton is the oldest part of the city. So my question is, they built up Trinity Parkway so fast Mm -hmm. and big. Like, how do we get those resources over on the south side? So we have those stores. So we have stuff that we can shop at that are, like, nice or we can actually go to. It's a great question, but remember, like, Trinity Park West, mm-hmm. that's recently developed. Mm-hmm. So guess where all that stuff came from? Development money. Right. <laughs> because developers, when they come and they develop, they develop the sidewalk. They divide, mm-hmm. They develop, like, the the commercial, you know, uh, ov- not the commercial oversight, but, like, the trees and the mm-hmm. bushes and the roses. Like, that comes in the development. Is that Spanos? Well, I don't... I don't I can't name that like Spanos was like you know the key indic the key indicator for the development. But I will say like when you get stores like Walmart, those are anchor stores. Mm-hmm. So when Walmart comes in a community, guess what? Then Walmart may call you up and say, "Hey, I want to develop there," or Chipotle or Wingstop or whatever. In South Stockton, we do need more anchor stores. But it's it's a little more difficult now because we're just coming out of a pandemic and an endemic. And so I don't want to use the word recession, but No. It's there's, a depression. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> it's yeah. really bad out here. I mean, we had so right before the pandemic, we had the Western Ranch marketplace. Mm-hmm. And we were set to get um God is Planet Fitness. Right, Planet Fitness. Right, mm-hmm. McDonald's is almost done. We got the mm-hmm. the Starbucks. We got the Seven Eleven. But wasn't there supposed to be apartments too? Because I looked this up, it was supposed to be apartments where the Starbucks and all that's supposed to go. Yeah, they but decided not to do that. Right, because people have you know free choice and free will. <laughs> so okay. sometimes projects pull out, just like the Planet Fitness. So Planet Fitness in 2019 was thriving, mm-hmm. but 2020, guess what happened? pandemic so they said okay nobody's coming to the gym we had to shut down right so they made the executive decision 
not to open in Western Ranch. Like, I hope that, you know, maybe in the next six months or so they they Just change their mind. But where would they go? There's they were going to go into the, the marketplace. It was the, next to Fruit for Less? No, no, no. The marketplace where the Seven Eleven oh, and okay. the McDonald's were like behind Seven Eleven. I don't, I don't remember where they were going to be located mm-hmm. in that in that um, in that um, area, but they were um, airmarked to go there, but they had to back out. And so, formularies are used when um, businesses are decide uh, they decide on whether or not they want to go to a community or not. So what they look at is the, the census people? track. Yeah. They want to look at if we build this Winco in, in near Western Ranch, is the store going to thrive? Or I is the store going to? I think it would, too. I think it would super but thrive. But <laughs> listen, I've, I've talked to um, the commercial brokers. They're working on it. They're working really hard. Um, when the big box um, ordinance was dispelled, um, we did that maybe about six, seven months ago. What, what is that? Where they say they can't build next to it? That What Food for Less had? Yeah. So okay. the big box ordinance was saying that big commercial um, stores like Walmart and Food for Less and Winco, like we have to make sure that we're intentional about where we're zoning those stores because we don't want to crush the moms and the pops and the lower, right. you know, and the, mm-hmm. the smaller stores. But we... We, got, we dispelled that because we do have crises right now where there are areas that have food insecurities and or challenges, but there is a recession and um, the desire to grow in the industry isn't as fast paced as we would like. Right. Uh, currently, the old where the Walmart was designated is up for sale yeah, I see um, that. and it is um, mm-hmm. you know mixed use commercial so there are um, opportunities and possibilities but it's also uh, contingent upon the um, you know the the need and the desire um, to go there and so I think that the um, the commercial brokers I think that's what we will call them they're trying. Um, they've had conversations. I talk to them periodically. Like, hey, do we have any, you know, any, you know, hot ticketed stores that want to come? But currently, it's kind of dry, um, and that's a problem. Um, but do we need more retail stores? Absolutely. How to get them there? Um, we need to continue to have those conversations collectively. Um. How do you feel about what's going on with the Stockton politics right now? Oof. <laughs> well, you know, I think that um, politics is tough. Mm-hmm. It's hard. Um, it's definitely hard when you are a woman. Right. It is uh, especially hard when you are from South Stockton, and mm-hmm. it's triply hard when you are a woman of color. And so, you know, the political climate is definitely different. Um, It's a little concerning, to be honest. Um, But, you know, one thing that I've learned is um, you got to march on. You got to keep you got to keep working um, and ignore it as much as you can, because sometimes it's toxic. Right. And we looked at the, we talked about the youth earlier. Is there anything that you're going to bring to the South Side for the youth? Um, again, I would love to do more mentorship for the youth. I think even for myself, and, you know, I'm a little older, but I will say when you experience um, a community that pours in and supports and uplifts, is different when you come in and, and there's so much, um, negativity. I think I'm concerned with the youth about um, um, the possibility that there aren't as many mentorship programs as there should be. Um, I think, especially, I, ha- I do have a 15 year old, and one thing that I get concerned about is like, I I want him to go to college, but what does he want to do? Right. It, like, how does he identify who he is using his autonomy? As an individual. I don't think they push college anymore in school. No. I went to West Ranch, and they weren't really pushing. 
Right. I think they only pushed it to certain people. And that, yeah, and that's a problem. But my kids went to Stockton Collegiate, and they Mm -hmm. pushed college in kindergarten. They was pushing college. Okay. But I had to realize that, yeah, I went to college, too. But everybody's not made to to go to college. Right. And one thing that I pride myself on is, like, the apprenticeship programs through, like, the the building trades. Mm -hmm. That's been a real good opportunity for our young people. In fact, the last three graduations that they had um, that I attended, there were a significant amount of um, young people who graduated and who... And women, too. There was a young woman who was from Western Ranch that attended. And I was I didn't know she was going to say that, but she said, shout out to Council Member Wormsley for putting this on uh, mm-hmm. next door because that's how I found out about it. But oh, she was really? a woman, a young woman in, in the building trade. In the building trade. Right. My fiance is an uh, electrician. Love trade. it. He's Love in it. the union. Yeah. Love it. But mm-hmm. here again, I think that that's an excellent pathway yeah, for our exactly. young people because you're giving them prevailing wages Mm -hmm. you're giving them health insurance Mm -hmm. you're giving them an opportunity so i would like to see more apprenticeship opportunities come um to south stockton um i would like to see we've we've done some things with investing in like community-based organizations Mm -hmm. to provide like mental health services empowerment groups mentorship um opportunities i would like to see more of that um and because i'm a social worker i'm gonna say it but i would love to see more like supportive services that really target the wellness um and pour into the well-being of our young people because they need it is significant um i would like to also see in order for that to happen i would like to see the board of supervisors at the table i would like to see the school districts no matter if it's Manteca or Stockton at the table and the city to come up with strategy, ideas, and then streamline funding in order for that to happen. Do you guys sit down with Manteca Unified because of Western Ranch? Because it doesn't really yes. seem like it. Yes, we do. Okay, because it, it seems like we're just a forgotten <laughs> yeah. area that nobody really cares about, especially yeah. with the district. Not a lot of people come out there and come talk to us as students. Like, you bring up the trades. I wish they would come to the school and let the kids know, like, hey, there's college, but there's also you can follow this path line. I think they have, and I was just at the school district. Um, I graduated like 13 years yeah. ago. So. <laughs> I, think that, I think that the the relationship is evolving. I'll just say okay. that. And last week I was there, um, the trustee, Eric Duncan, was there, and another, I think her name was Martha Guerrero. Oh, Our mercy, uh, I'm bad with names, but we were there. We were talking to the young folks about um, the difference between like the political powers that be mm-hmm. um, and what our responsibilities are, and how young people can be involved in the political process um, to have a voice, and then just reminding them if they see something, say something as well. So I think that. I know it was 13 years ago, but we're evolving. Right. We're trying. We have the M- MUSD um, and City of Stockton 3x3. Three three. We also have the City of Stockton um, and SUSD 3x3. Three three. And then we're in conversations about that intergovernmental committee that will comprise of all of us talking together. Mm-hmm. And, again, resources, budgetary issues, and how we can collaborate for our young people. And then um, with everything, a lot of stuff has sh- closed down in Stockton like they had the golf land closed down they had um hammer skate closed down they had naughty nicks all closed down is there anything that you can bring to at least the south side I know they have sky zone on the north side but like anything that we can bring to the south side for kids so you know one thing that I pride myself on is like I never want to make promises that I can't deliver right because you know I think that especially in South Stockton, we have been given a blank check that no one's been able to cash. Mm -hmm. But I will say that it's a priority to continue to have a conversation about bringing opportunities such as that, Um, such as, you know, um, a naughty next, well, they're probably not in business, but something like a naughty next, Mm -hmm. uh, places for our young people to, um, to have safe spaces to like conjugate, 
Um, I will say I continue to pride myself on the community-based organizations. Like, I don't know what the, I think it's um, New uh, New Vision or New Birth. New Vision. New Vision is a school. Mm-hmm. There's a church in um, in Western Ranch that's been doing a really great job in bringing. The one that's half built? Is that right <laughs> in the middle? It's on William Moss? Has a daycare um, center in it. No, that's not. No, that one is on EWS Woods and um, maybe William Moss. Maybe yeah. Maybe right there on that yeah. corner. But I was talking about the one that's right across the street from Fruit for Less that's half built. Then oh, no. Oh, <laughs> don't even get me started on that. We'll talk. Remind me to talk about the vacant um, commercial property building, so because that may be helpful as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but I pride myself on the community based organizations that have been able to bring opportunities and resources. Two communities, especially Western Ranch, where we're just so enclosed and there's not very much. But they they did a great job with doing, they did a mental health symposium with our young people. And then they also opened their church every Friday night for them to come and, like, skateboard or play basketball. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. My sister used to go to, my little sister used to go to daycare right there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, the, yeah, that's the exact one. And then also, um, what? how can our community centers stay open later at night mm-hmm. um, for our young people? And if community-based organizations want to use our community uh, community centers, and then I say our because they're all of ours, right. um, how do we pour into that? Because I think that Again, especially with, like, the recession, and we don't really know what's going on um, worldwide, to be exact. Like, everybody's in trouble right now. The state just announced something like an $86 billion uh, deficit. So that's going to be a challenge when we look at, like, big-ticketed projects. And if California, like the fifth largest economy in the world, is at a deficit, what does that say about the potential deficit on a federal level? And so I just think that we may be in another place where there's going to be a shift. Right. Um, so we have to prepare ourselves. But at the same time, we got to prepare um, any community-based organization that wants to support our young people, equip them with an opportunity to get funding or to help them with grant writing so that we can shore up our young people as much as possible. I know they just had the $2 million that just went out to these communities. Was any of them thinking about doing, like, a teen center? Because I know they have, like, some in Elk Grove. Yeah. They have teen centers, like, to go and be safe. So I know that Amelia and Adam's whole life is has a... Um, a center that's open on Fridays and Saturdays and sometimes Mm -hmm. Sundays for our young people. But the problem is is that's not in South Stockton. Yeah. So that is a challenge. Um, But I know that the city also has is accepting requests for proposals for the Podesto Center. Mm -hmm. So I would love to see, but I'm only... Where's the Podesto Center? On El Dorado Street. Okay. So downtown, Stockton, centrally... Mm -hmm located but they're accepting an rfp for that and i'm i'm hoping that that you know potentially become like a youth hub where several nonprofits and or community-based organizations can come together to collectively provide services and and opportunities for young people i know i did a tour here yeah but do you remember the podesto center it used to have um yeah, it used to have a studio. Oh, really? So I remember where young people would go and, like, produce their own little mm-hmm. rap CD or their little pop CD or R&B. They should. Yeah, and they had, they it, it was place. so, yeah, it was branded. It was on a CD. Mm-hmm. Like, I would love to see opportunities like that happen again. However, going back to the budget and, and some of the anticipation, mm-hmm. um, we really need to find a collective way to, like, build out the bench for these community-based organizations so that they can be successful. Yeah, I feel like El Dorado's good, but I feel like a little bit more this way because a lot of these kids don't have cars. Like, I know I had the privilege of getting a car at 16, but a lot of people don't have cars at 16. Like, if you go to Western Ranch High, there's probably a handful of cars. If you go to Lincoln, I bet you all those cars. Parking lot. Nice, right, nice cars and all that. So, it. I feel like we just need a little bit more on this side, especially because the youth out here are being violent. Like, it's not like 
oh, they're just out in the streets. It's like, oh, they're out in these streets and you got to watch where you're going, how you talk to people. Yeah. You can't. I would even say they're being impulsive because I don't even think that a lot of them even process what they're and doing. thinking. Of, I don't think they think about the consequences of some of their actions. Mm-hmm. But what if we like open up the schools and, and mm-hmm. let the schools, you know, be open for um, a longer amount of time? Um, because I think that the answer is so well, the need is so immediate that we have to use what we have. In South Stockton, we have uh, the Merlos Center, uh, the Dorothy L. Jones Center. Um, but on Friday about 5, guess what? It's They're closed. closed. <laughs> yeah, that's, They're I closed. feel like we need to build that up some type of way, have some. We have the Taft so. Center. We have the Van Busker Center. I know the Center. Taft Center, the Van Busker Center. We have the Kennedy Park you, Center. But even then, at the Van Busker, because my fiance sometimes goes play plays basketball, you still got to pay a dollar. We mm-hmm. have a dollar. But some of the kids... <laughs> And want to get in, don't have a dollar. So, like, a dollar is a lot to the south side. It is. So, I just feel like there needs that needs to be free. Um, there needs to be more over there for those kids. And why are they paying a dollar, which I'll right. bring, bring up on Tuesday. But I, I don't know if it's any more a dollar, but I know yeah. for a fact that he was paying a dollar. And a dollar is a lot. It's yeah. a lot, especially like Van Busker's right across the street from uh, the Conway community. Mm-hmm. Like that's a lot to some people. Right. Um, so you're absolutely right. Um, I'm going to bring that up and mm-hmm. make sure that that's still not <laughs> happening. But I do know like in the summertime, we expanded the community services hours like Friday and Saturday. Saturday was like, you know, 10 to 7 or something like that. But on Friday, they expanded the the um, the gym to like 10 at night, which is a step in the right direction. Right. Um, because if the kids are out in these streets and they don't have nothing to do, of course they're going to make bad decisions. Right. Okay. But I want to get into <coughs> some more questions about um, the food desert. You brought that up. Where do you see these food deserts at? And like... How can we fix those food deserts? So one thing that I think is going to be um, a vessel for change is now we just passed um, the vacant commercial building ordinance. So Mm -hmm. um, this basically really is stemming from a lot. Like if you go down South El Dorado, you see all those vacant buildings. Well, why do... Um, owners get the right to take up the space and mm-hmm. opportunity for others. So with a vacant commercial building ordinance, it's pretty much going to push the um, the owners to either revitalize, be good stewards, good be, be good neighbors, or the city's going to take action against your building. Like there was one... Um, I see that it's being remodeled, but I haven't heard that they're going to revitalize it. Mm-hmm. It's an old store across from, oh, God, it's Smash Burgers. Now it used to be Manny's. But it's a great place. There's two Manny's? Yeah, there's two Manny's. There's oh, one I on, went to the one on Pacific. On yeah, there, Pacific. W- there was one on El Dorado, too. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I never went to that one. Every now and again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't went. But <clears throat> it's a store. Mm-hmm. It's a p- potential for a store. Um, and Are you talking about that where the tattoo shop is? Cross street from the donut shop? No, no. I'm talking okay. South El Dorado. South El Dorado. Mm-hmm. So do you know where you know where the McKinley Park is? Yes. You know where uh, the Golden Star used to be? Yes. So keep going a little further up. Uh-huh. And that's where you see um, used to be Manny's, now it's Smash Burgers, but it was across the street. I think it was S and G. I'm I'm not sure what the name of this store was back in the day, mm-hmm. but then it turned into like um, like another like maybe like um, a store that really specializes in like Mexican products. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's vacant. It's been vacant for like I don't know, maybe about two years. Oh, right but there when it devi- goes like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but it's a possibility for a storefront. Mm-hmm. But why are we allowing owners to be dormant in their pro- their property, not invested in their property? The property is blightful for the community. Mm-hmm. Um, 
with the ordinance, it, it pretty much says, what are you going to do with your property? It's a business. Are you going to revitalize? Are you going to be a good team player or a good neighbor or what? Um, so it kind of puts a little pressure on the owner. Same thing with the Kmart. Right. That Kmart's been vacant for, that God, can definitely be 10 years. A grocery store. It definitely can be a grocery store. Mm -hmm. But it's not even not even up for sale and so we need to start as a city we need to take our city back mm -hmm. and reinforce standards for people who want to do business here how do we get other city council members to get that going in well the it's South been a it's been approved mm -hmm. um but it hasn't been implemented yet i'm we're hoping maybe january february ish mm -hmm. um so community can start making complaints about it being so blightful to put the pressure on the property owners to either be a good neighbor, <laughs> I don't know, sell, invest, mm -hmm. or suffer, you know, some consequences. Um, because it's unacceptable, you're holding up space and opportunities for other development. Um, I think that that's going to put us in a step in the right direction can you imagine like a Safeway buying that place right. or a Trader Joe's buying that place? Like that's going to really um, set the standards and the tone for people in South Stockton. So, Well, Trader Joe's won't go. Oh, I'm sure. they go by the census and they go by college educated. And formularies. Yeah. Formularies. So they'll every be more likely to go on 8 Mile right. than go over here. So. And to be honest, I heard that. That should be illegal. Yeah. By the way. Yeah. But most stores use formularies yeah. to determine on whether like, they're going to buy. But to go by bills. who's college educated in this area depends on if you're going to put the. Is that why we don't have a Whole Foods? Yeah. That's crazy. That's mm -hmm. messed up. Mm -hmm. Well, when you go, see, when you go to Whole Foods. Where's the near, nearest Whole Food? I think I've never been to Whole Foods. Oh, I've been to Sprouts. Yeah, well, they're all on the, like East Coast. Yeah, yeah, they're everywhere. I know. I seen a Whole Foods in San Francisco, and I was like, "That's interesting." <laughs> I seen one but in Los Angeles recently. Los Angeles, <coughs> but you don't get. I think no. There's one in Sacramento. Oh, is it? You, I think you can order Amazon. I feel like you can order the Amazon and they'll deliver it mm -hmm. for you to your house. And they have but the lockers. Yeah, that's yeah. like extra money like who has the money to do that right but formularies are what you know big business use and mm -hmm. they look at the census track and they look at the the income that um that people have but to also dispel that myth um and shout out to michael duffy um they said the same thing about bringing a bank and south stockton got one of his first banks which was then financial credit union what is it what uh, bank Financial Credit Union. Uh huh. Where That's is that on the located? corner of Airport and. Oh, right there, the one to your right when you're yeah. driving on. Uh, yeah. What's that street? Is that Airport? Airport. Yeah. Um, I just don't know the cross street. Across the street from those new development. Yeah. New, well, we, newer. It's not new, but it's like ten years old. Right. Yeah. We can't travel together because we totally wouldn't know what street <laughs> we're going down. No, I know the streets. Like I'd be like, okay, do, turn here, turn here. I know I'm just where not it gonna is. Tell yeah. you the name. <laughs> And I lived here my whole life, well, since I was six, and I'm 32. Shameful. Yeah. <laughs> but getting back to um, to Anchor Projects, remember that, um, which I'm, which was part of my work and when I worked for the Congress, Congress member, Jerry McNerney, probably about eight years ago, we have the, the new Veterans Hospital opening mm -hmm. up. There, from what I understand, the uh, ribbon cutting for that will be in October. Next year. Yes. I'm it's sorry. It's a year. Sorry, not October. April. April? Yeah. And anybody <coughs> that is a veteran can use that? Yes. And that doesn't matter if they go to war or not? Does, do you know that? No. If they're a veteran. Because okay. um, my dad is. Yeah. That's all I was asking. If you have he a vet go to war. Yeah. But if he, he enlisted, mm -hmm. he can use that service. Okay. But think about all of the jobs it's about to bring. Mm -hmm. Think about all of the doctors and nurses and professionals but will it bring people from the south side to get jobs if they yeah of course they, because these are gonna be jobs that are gonna be open to the community yeah but going back to the education part of it well i think that um list listen i think that we have a significant problem with like um illiteracy and rather not 
people are, are, are young folks are proficient. But there, there's also some great opportunities. We have the Healthcare Academy mm-hmm. through SUSD that's prominent. And, like, they're graduating young people who want to get into the health professionals. So I hope that that helps them out. We have CSU Stanislaus. They have a nursing program. I hope that uh, helps those nurses out. And that's on downtown, CSU Stanislaus. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. hey, we got a great nursing program at our very yes. own Delta College. Yes, so do. I hope that brings some, some jobs to them. Mm-hmm. And then also, again, because I'm a social worker, so I always got to level it up. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that, like, some of the social workers from, like, CSU um, Sac State, CSU Stanislaus, which is also on the Stockton campus, I hope that levels them up, too. Those are great jobs. I wouldn't want to work for the Department of Veterans today, but I probably would have wanted to work with them 10 years ago because they make some pretty good money. Right. Um, but I also think that when we get those professionals coming in, I think that that's going to be an anchor for Western Ranch to have more development because where are they going to go grocery shopping at? Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, problem, you know, we know where they. Where may. are they going to go get their lunch at? Well, they're probably going to go late through the table, right? But where are they going to get their lunch from? And remember, like a lot of the medical uh, practitioners, they're still some of them still could be the in their intern um, status because mm-hmm. once you go to med school, you got to do your placement. Yeah. Rather, people believe it or not, San Joaquin County is one of the best schools to train medical professionals. Um, how we preserve them to be residents of San Joaquin County and Stockton, another conversation. Well, I think they don't also don't look at the the, the beautiful side of Stockton, right? Because if you go on Brookside, that that's <coughs> like a dream to live over there. <laughs> even in some of the even the smaller houses next to Lincoln District, I'd be like, I really want to buy a house over there, but I can't afford can't. it. Right? <laughs> I can't afford it. That's true. And, it, and there's some beautiful aspects of... Um, I think downtown is beautiful, too. I do, too. When it's I, cleaned up. I think the levee um, in Western Ranch, second to none. I walk that levee at least three, four times a week. I walk it, too. The problem is the smell in the morning <laughs> from the cows across. <laughs> That's my problem. I'd be like, okay... It's like a nice walk. There's a lot of people that ride their bikes and walk up there. Like, you run into people there. You do. But um, the cows is just like. Oh, it's too much. <laughs> but it's so tranquil, and I love the sunset. So I, know. I think that these these opportunities are going to draw people into our city and into our community with the hospital. I also think that it will also be an anchor for hopefully maybe Walmart changes his mind. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, I did send them a message and say, pretty please change your mind. <laughs> um, but it may. And so I think that there's a lot of hope. Um, and I want people to know that um, there are people who are working hard and singing the tune of South Stockton. I think I talk about that two, three times a week um, in one conversation, perhaps. We got to be hopeful. Yeah. And last question before we get out of here. There's a lot of people saying that they want to see ch- more change happening. We are not going to see change overnight, but they want to see more change. That's what they're saying on the next door. What do you say to those people that say that they want to see more change happening in the south side of Stockton? I think change is here. I think mm-hmm. change um, is now. I think it's, it's, I think that, you know, we have to recognize where we've been and where we're going. Um, we're talking about communities and a city that hasn't had that in decades eons i think we're also divided yeah it's not going to happen overnight Mm -hmm. but it's coming and i think that we take the small wins for what they are because a win is a win um i think that we're progressing i think that we have more challenges but we get further if we're, we're we're united but if we're divided that slows the process right so i think that you know sit back put your seatbelts on and let's 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 move together um, and solidarity because the divisiveness isn't going to help anything but cause more division. Right. Is there anything you want to say before you get out of here? Do you want to talk to the people, talk to the camera? Uh, I just <laughs> want to say this was a, a great opportunity. It's great to be back at uh, Delta College. I was a Delta College graduate. It's great. I, I love to see the innovation in um, in this beautiful establishment and then shout out to you all 
uh, for keeping up the good fight and also bringing um, the message because we are, we talked about food deserts. We're mm-hmm. also a news desert. Yes. News and that's, pro- that's mm-hmm. problematic as well. So keep, keep doing a good fight and see you on the other that's side. That's really problematic. Yeah. Oh, because that's, yeah. That's horrible. Like you go online and people are saying stuff, but you don't know if it's true or false. But then if you say something, then I said something in one of the comments before. You probably know which comments I said something in. And I was getting attacked by people. I'm like, what the heck? It's terrible. <laughs> all I said was, so someone got shot at Fruit for Less. And all I said is like something. And people were like, oh, just say you're broke. I'm like. If that's our store, what are you talking about? And then somebody wrote, oh, you could take a bus to other grocery stores. I'm like, that's, you're missing the problem. That's not even the point. It's going over your head. Like, I don't understand. (laughs) But the thing about it, at the end of the day, we cannot, we are neighbors. Right. We cannot attack one another. People are, um, they are, uh. They should be able to have their opinion and not be attacked. But Mm -hmm. that's why I'm not on some of those sites. Right. And I can't respond. It's too much. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for coming out. It was great talking to you. For sure. Please follow me on at Kimberly Wormsley, City of Stockton on Facebook for more information. And then we should have our uh, website up and it's going to be really easy. It's Mm KimberlyWormsley.com to get more current and real time information about plans for South Stockton and how we're proceeding forward. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It was nice having you. Same. Thank you. Bye. Bye.